Welcome to Chuck Builds. I've recently moved from Texas to Florida and I'm going to be setting up a new smart home. And I'm gonna take you along for that ride. We're gonna set everything up. I'm going to record everything I do to set this up and I'll make sure that it's all documented on my blog, chuck-builds.com. So if you wanna do this yourself, it's very easy for you to follow along or pick and choose what you like that I have in my smart home to add to yours. The first thing we need to do is actually set up our home assistant operating system. I'm choosing to do this on a virtual machine. I have hardware already set up and I already have Proxmox installed. If you wanna follow along on how to do that, I do have a video on my channel about how to set up Proxmox. And this is the machine I previously was using for Home Assistant OS when I was in Dallas, Texas. Otherwise, we're gonna be starting from scratch here. And I previously recommended the T-Tech scripts on installing Home Assistant OS VM onto Proxmox. And that person who did that uh, passed away, unfortunately, and the community took over his scripts. And for some reason, the Home Assistant OS virtual machine script is just not working for me on Proxmox right now, which is not a big deal because we'll do it ourselves manually. And it's probably a little bit safer not executing code from strangers on the Internet site unseen. We're going to first just choose our Proxmox node here. Mine's named Millie after my dog. And then we're going to come over and click on shell. Before we type anything, we're going to go to the Home Assistant website and we are under their installation section. And then we're going to go to other systems or alternative. And we're going to just copy the link for this Proxmox QCAL2 file. We're just going to copy the link here come back over to Proxmox and we're gonna type W-G-E-T, W-Git, and then we'll paste the link for this file. And Proxmox will download that file directly to it. If we type LS, we can see that the file is here. And then we're gonna type U-N-X-Z space, and then start typing out that file name directly above us. I'm gonna to go to H-A-O and then hit tab to autocomplete. And then I'll press enter and it's going to uncompress this file. Uh, we just need to give it a minute. It is a little CPU intensive, so it will be uncompressing this file. And we're waiting to see root at milli or root at your node name pop back up. And that'll let us know it's ready. And so it popped back up so we know it's ready. And what we're going to do next is come up to the top right corner and create a VM. And the node is gonna be Milli, and then choose a VM ID. It should auto-populate a free uh, ID for you. Uh, so you don't wanna repeat any, such as 100 or 102. I have 101 open, so it filled that in. Then I'm gonna type in HAOS Tampa, so I don't mix it up. We're gonna come over to the OS tab and choose do not use any media. We're going to come over to the system tab and we're going to change our machine to Q35. And then we're also going to change our BIOS to OVMF and that's for the UEFI. We're going to add a EFI storage and I'm just going to choose my local LVM. You can ignore the external SSD. I just have one plugged in. And then we're going to uncheck pre-enroll keys. We're going to come over to the disks tab and we're just going to delete this disk with this little garbage can right here. We're going to go over to the CPU tab and we're going to set a minimum of two cores. You could bump this up, but you can change this later. So we'll do the minimum. And then for memory, uh, by default, it's 2048. We probably want to bump that up to 4096. I plan on adding a lot of things to this home assistant and I'm just going to save myself a step by starting high there. Going to the network tab, we're just gonna leave it blank. Uh, we're gonna have a bridge to the virtualized bridge here, and then we're gonna click next. Just make sure everything looks right in your dropdown, and then make sure that you do not choose start after created. I don't even think it'll let you select it, but we'll come click finish. And we should see it populate here on the left as it's being created and it did create. We can choose it and see the summary and there's not a lot happening and we don't wanna start it. We're gonna go back to our node, back to the shell, and we're going to type QM import disk altogether, then the VM ID. So that is the 101 that we had previously chosen for this virtual machine. And then we're gonna hit space and start typing HAOS and then hit tab to autocomplete HAOS OVA 16.2.qcal2. 
And then we're going to type our EFI location. And so for me, this is local LVM. And that was the setting we chose in the last option for the disk settings. We'll press enter. And it's going to import the disk to that container. So after that command finishes, we're going to come over to the left side of our data center, choose your node, and then find the new VM we created. For me, that is 101 HAOS Tampa. And we are going to come to the hardware tab. We're going to choose unused disk zero and then click edit. We're going to check this discard box right here. My understanding is that this is if you're on an SSD, which I am, that when you delete files in your virtual machine, it passes that remove operation through the virtual machine to your base hardware to prevent your SSD from filling up or uh, doing too many read writes. Not 100% on that, but it was recommended. So then we'll click add. And then we're gonna come to the options tab here. We're going to find boot order. Don't forget to enable start at boot right here. You're going to want that for every time Proxmox turns on Home Assistant starts, which is fourth one down for me. And then click edit. And we're going to choose the SCSI disk here. That's what we imported from the Home Assistant image. And then we're going to uncheck these other two from the boot order and then click OK. And after pressing OK, we're going to go to our console tab here and then click start. And we should see Home Assistant OS start up. The VM is going to start. It's going to boot into our image. And then this is the Home Assistant install. And we can see that it is starting up. And it's going to run through a lot of these settings. And then it'll give us our IP address at the end to be able to access this Home Assistant instance. And here it started right up and we have our IP address right here, 192.168.86.112. And then you don't forget your ports, 8123. And we can see that Home Assistant is preparing. So we will come back when this is done. All right, so Home Assistant has started up and it's ready to get started. Now, if you had a previous smart home, you could upload a backup or download it from Home Assistant Cloud. However, I'm going to be taking you on this journey with me of starting from scratch. And I kind of want a blank slate. It's been several years. I want to make sure I am starting fresh and doing the best I can from the get go, not cleaning up old messes. So we're going to hit create my smart home. For my user, I'm going to use my existing user that I've used everywhere. And I'm going to take my password from my password manager so I don't have to update that. And then I'm going to update my address as well. And then I'm going to actually allow them to get all my diagnostics and data. I usually don't do that for most of my products, but I really like Home Assistant. And if it helps them make a better product, I'm happy to give them basic analytics about how I'm using it. We'll hit next and it's going to start searching for compatible devices on my network. Um, if we go to the integrations tab, we might see something. We've got uh, just a router. There's not much connected to the Wi-Fi here yet. And so the next videos on this channel will be getting everything set up and we're set up in Home Assistant. So from here on out, we're going to be setting up the rest of my smart home. And I've got a few things I'm gonna run through. I think the very next video will be setting up Zigbee to MQTT and getting my first devices connected on that. So be sure to subscribe to me on YouTube at Chuck Builds if you wanna see the rest of this series or check out my website, www.chuck-builds.com to see all that I'm working on lately. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions.